So when it comes to my self care, it's it's very food related. Hence, the big belly. Um, breathing is kind of the stereotypical mm. exercise you can do, um, but it is really helpful. You know, you can do the standard breathe in for five, hold for five, mm. breathe out for five, hold it for really five. It really does help. It really truly does. Welcome to Critical Thinking Required, hosted by LBW. This podcast is intended for free thinkers, entrepreneurs, and knowledge seekers. Join us as we discuss relevant financial topics, explore with guests their financial journeys, and engage with experts in industries such as space, media and entertainment, real estate, and many more. Buckle up and enjoy the ride. Welcome to Critical Thinking Required. We're your hosts today, Kennedy and Nathaniel, the L and LBW, if you will. Um, and today, Nathaniel, we're going to be talking about your feelings. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, investor emotions, um, how to keep them in check. Yeah. I don't know if you all know, it's kind of been a crazy year. Um, the S&P 500 index is more than um, 20% down year to date, which is kind of insane because last year it was a positive 26-ish percent and some change. So it's kind of a big difference. Um, and I mean, that's kind of scary, right? So as an investor... And human, Nathaniel, how are you feeling? There is some debate about whether I'm human or not, according no to debate. office lore. So just go with a grain of salt on that one. Nathaniel doesn't plug himself in every night. He's a he's a human. Truth be told, who knows? <laughs> well, you know, it depends. As a professional investor in my capacity, I'm I'm very confident in the investments that we've made, that they're the right choices, that they're made at the right prices, and that they'll perform in the long run. But uh, as my as our client's portfolio manager, yeah, I do feel some pressure occasionally uh, because the general synopsis has always been that if uh, things are going great and they're in their by by definition in some cases overvalued, there is sometimes some pressure to buy and take advantage as long as the good times are rolling, which many best investors can forget that sometimes things don't always go great. So, and then when the, the market is down and, and people are depressed and you get the opposite of, hey, this is 50% down. Why, why are you still holding it? Well, it may be 50% down in price, but that doesn't mean that its value went down 50% from when I bought it. It's highly unlikely. So it, balancing these, being a client portfolio manager and then being a professional investor, it's it can be a balancing act. So like everything else in life, including maybe impulse buying that bag of chocolates, feelings play a big role. So indeed, can you tell me a little bit more about that process? Like what that looks like? Mm. So if you look at the cycle of a typical in investor's emotion, uh, it typically starts with optimism and then it works its way up to exuberance, euphoria. But then something happens and then the markets, they generally come down and then you, you go through the, the, the stages of denial, anxiety, fear, depression, panic, then even capitulation occurs where you, are, you become despondent. But then the markets reach a trough and things go back up where you start to feel skepticism then some hope, relief, and then you're back to optimism. Yay. It's a cycle, <laughs> as with many things in life. So I will say that the emotional cycle is pretty accurate and that you do go through these emotional phases, even as a professional investor. But as a, a regular John Doe who, who may do this in their spare time, you, you experience the same thing, the ups and the downs. But the important things to remember are, number one, how fast do you adjust to your emotions? And number two, how much can you control your emotions and not let them make the investment decisions for you? The thing about emotions and markets is that when they, the markets are good, like from 09 to, to 21, people made so much money without really even needing to think or to, or to do research in their investments. So by the end of 2021, we would still have, we had still had clients asking us, well, why don't you buy Netflix? Why don't you buy Amazon? And don't get us wrong. It's not that we thought that those were bad companies. We think that they're very good companies, but 
we didn't want to buy them at high prices relative to what we believe that they were worth. So it just didn't make sense to, to buy them in the first place, in our, in our opinion. And people often forget about this when everything is great. But as we've seen going into 2022, not everything is great. There's a lot of uh, air being let out of the bubble, if you will. Sometimes the pressure of following those trends, though, the allure of falling in with the crowd, it can be very powerful. And back in 2021, those tech companies, they were just not the right prices relative to our estimates of intrinsic value. So when we enter a bear market, people tend to get depressed and they start to feel like they need to get out. They need to feel safe. Feeling safe is one of the most, I think, underestimated emotions when it comes to whatever is necessary to make you feel that way. And people react in all sorts of different ways. If, if you truly feel like you can't function knowing that your investments are, are, that your money is in the market and you're seeing all of these lows, then yes, it might make sense for you to sell everything and get out to feel that sense of, of security. But History has shown time and time again that it is best to buy and hold through the tumult than it is to buy and sell at poor timing. I think that point about feeling safe is a really important one, right? Um, because before we can do anything else in life, like we need to address our basic human needs, like feeling safe. That's like if you uh, think there's this um, model in psychology called Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, and it's it's a whole thing. But essentially, you have to address the things at the bottom before you can do anything above it. You can, if you can put that little photo up here, um, and so at the very bottom, it's, it's safety, right? So when we feel safe, if we feel unsafe, of course, that's going to like make us feel uncomfortable. We're going to want to do something about that. Um, and so it's really important, as we've been doing, to identify these emotions, um, but it's also really important to figure out how to manage them. Um, and we can do that by practicing self-care, which you may have heard about. Uh, it's been kind of a big buzzword, buzz phrase in the last several years. Um, for, for anyone who is unaware, um, self-care is really like anything that you can do to take care of your well-being, whether that be emotional, physical, mental, whatever it may be. And because self-care can look a lot of different ways. It's often really personal, right? Mm -hmm. So we're picking on you today, Nathaniel. What are some things that you do to practice self-care that you wouldn't mind sharing with everyone? So uh, oh. it can be difficult, mm -hmm. uh, but it helps to have people around you that you feel safe with, that you can trust to help you in your times of need. And for me, uh, it's been my partners, it's been Kennedy, other people who work here, and of course, we, less, uh, lest we forget, my wife, Ying. <laughs> oh boy, I'm going to get in trouble for that one. Can't believe you <laughs> put her last in the manual, oh, no, that no, was no, a mistake. No. Last but not least. <laughs> oh, no, She comes last because she's always first. Isn't that how that goes? Because like at the award speech, you know, the acceptance speeches, don't they always leave the most important person for last? I hope you're excited for this evening, Nathaniel. <laughs> Anyways, uh, without that support network present, I would be in trouble because it's people like them that uh, help me talk through uh, my investments. It's not that I'm, 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 I need validation from them about whether it makes sense or not. It's more about just talking through the idea and processing the information, for example. If X falls 20%, I'm going to revisit the thesis. And if it's a part of that process, I might talk it out with Yang, or I might talk it out with my business partners, or someone here at the firm that might have some insight within that company, and, and just to process that information and see if I've missed anything about it. Awesome. That's a really good example. Um, for me, I have found that it's really important for me to keep a consistent sleep schedule. Um, if I don't do that, or if I get less sleep, or maybe even worse sleep, I start to get very grumpy. <laughs> um, my anxiety skyrockets through the roof, um, and I'm generally a very unpleasant person to be around. Um, and I also don't feel good, right? Um, and that doesn't help me manage any of these other like anxieties around the finance world or just life in general. 
I do feel like you hear it a lot, but it is really important to take care of those like basic things. Um, throw back to the Maslow's hierarchy of needs thing. You really do need to be able to take care of these like lower level, lower level, very important sleeping, eating well, exercising. Mm -hmm. I hate hearing that. I hate hearing it, but it really is true. Yeah. It really is. But then sometimes it really is one thing after another, even though we try as hard as we can to get that good sleep, eat well, exercise, sometimes things just build up and mm -hmm. things kind of implode. So in those moments, what are we going to do? Mm. What do you do, Nathaniel, in those moments? So we like to joke around here. Well, I like to joke around here that if I wasn't married or if um, I, I can't speak for, for Kennedy, Caroline or, or Gary. Not married. Not right. But uh, Dan uh, and Tim and myself, I, I like to joke that if we weren't with respective, our respective partners, uh, that I would never go home. <laughs> <laughs> I would sleep in our office if I if I could get away with it. So I I have I, I tend to work even though it, it just stops making sense when I'm tired and I'm not even able to process the information. Uh, Yang, my wife has to constantly check in on me and and put the the brakes on and she has to physically drag me out of my chair to to get us get me away from the computer. Unplugs your laptop. Literally, yes. Although to be fair, I do that to her sometimes because yeah, you know, she has issues too. Teamwork makes the dream work. That's yeah. marriage, right? <laughs> I could tell you a story about a friend's Lego set with Ying, okay. and it was she stayed up till three in the fucking morning. <laughs> three in the morning, no joke. She started at nine a.m. at night. <laughs> three in the morning, I stayed up with her. That's dedication. Marriage. Yeah, love mm -hmm. it. True love. Mm -hmm. That is uh -huh. relationship goals. Hashtag. Amen. <laughs> so when it comes to my self care, it's it's really ying care is what we call it at home, I guess. I think she, <laughs> okay. Uh, and it's very food related. Hence the big belly. Um, yeah. So those are, those are, those are, those are <laughs> it's been on the table. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, so yeah, those are some good examples. Um, moder moderation is key, perhaps, with anything in the world. Um, but you know, in these moments of high anxiety and stress, it is really important to take a couple of moments for you and your headspace, right? Mm. Um, it's not only going to help you, but it's going to positively impact whoever you're communicating with as well. Um, breathing is kind of the stereotypical mm. exercise you can do, um, but it is really helpful. You know, you can do the standard breathe in for five, hold for five, mm. breathe out for five, hold for five. It really does help. It really, truly does. Mm. Um, it's just hard to remember in those moments of those feelings of like anxiety and panic. And like, mm. like, I, I feel like, um, like a, a, a jar of bees that you check around, like that's how I feel like it is. And so it's really hard in those moments to stop and be like, that's rough. Yeah. But it's important, right? Especially when you're making in, in decisions as an investor mm. as well. Mm -hmm. Gets blood um, to the brain. It really does. Mm -hmm. um, some other um, some other ideas. Something that works for me is um, temperature. Um, so if you're feeling really nervous or really panicky, um, I really like holding some an ice pack to my chest or to my neck. Mm -hmm. And like I said earlier, um, these things are really personal, right? So because just because this works for me or just because it works for Nathaniel doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you. Mm. Luckily, Google exists and it's, it's mostly pretty accessible um, if, if you're watching this anyway. Mm. <laughs> um, so I would definitely recommend, you know, doing some Googling. There's tons of lists, tons of resources of different things you can try. So well, we are not professionals in this no, space. No, so no. Do your own due diligence. Yes. Go yeah. to a doctor. Therapy is good too. Therapy is good. Yeah. Yes. Go therapy. Hmm. Um, but yeah, so it, it's, it's very important. So this is our uh, suggestion to y'all um, in these moments of anxiety. When you see these markets go up and down, take a deep breath, splash some water on your face and practice some mindfulness. Uh, so just to end, we want to say that basically it comes down to taking a deep breath when markets go a little haywire. It's okay. It's healthy for markets to do this every once in a while. So long as your investment time frame is for the long term, generally speaking, a buy and hold strategy is the best route.
but everybody's different. Everybody's situation is different and unique. So it always helps to go speak to a professional and you guys can then figure out what is best for you. So with that, I want to thank you for listening to us and I hope you have a pleasant evening. Like, like and subscribe. Thank you for taking the time to start your journey of thinking differently and listening to LBW talk about stuff they love. Until next time.